Hi, I'm Everett. And I'm Rebecca. And this is Sunny. We've traveled for the last 13 months through the United States, through Canada, and even spent some time in Alaska. It's time to move on, so we're selling Sunny. Here's the tour. Reflecting back on our 13-month journey, there's nothing we would change as far as the layout goes. We wanted a vehicle to explore the great outdoors, while maintaining an interior space that was functional, efficient, and felt more like a modern apartment. And that's exactly what Sunny's interior reflects. Sunny is a 2018 Ford Transit High Roof Extended 250. A couple improvements we made just on the outside. We added these Goodyear Wrangler tires and we put those on 16 inch ultra rims. Big improvement from the factory tires. Also underneath, we added some adjustable air springs. So basically with an air compressor, you have the ability to raise or lower the back end depending on what you want. We also have the ability to hook up to 30 amp shore power. Uh, the outlet is actually right under here. Um, we didn't put it on the side, just wanted a cleaner look and uh, a little more stealthy looking. Um, also on top of Sunny, we have 400 watt Renergy solar panels and a small deck that can fit like two people. Let me walk you through our garage area. Uh, underneath here is storage. Uh, we have lights, you just have to flip the switch underneath. Uh, when we were building her, we found that there was kind of wasted space in the walls. So we just kind of built like these little storage areas where I was able to fit in here two drills, a flashlight, a small air compressor. We also have the same thing on the other side. It's a little further back for those items you don't have to get to uh, too often. But it's a nice little storage area. And then this third door here is the plumbing where you can see the water tank. When you're filling it up, you can judge how much it is. Up here, we have the, uh, the gravity fill, and then we have a 30 gallon freshwater tank. We also have an outdoor shower. You can just plug it in here. And also we have access to an outlet. This is where the uh, water heater hooks up and plugs in. But if you need an outlet out back, you can just plug in here through this door. And when we were building her, we tried to figure out where we could put uh, our phone and a bottle of water at night. So we built these little nightstands. You just flip those up and you can place your phone, water, whatever. And we do have USBs to charge your phone through the night. And they're easy enough to uh, collapse during the day. You just fold them down. Also, this is the Wii Boost on and off switch. So at night you can just reach over click her off, and go to sleep. We also have a bug screen that we easily attach with Velcro and magnets. The front area is a pretty standard Ford Transit. Uh, it did not have cruise control when we bought her, so we had that installed. And also for the DC to DC battery charger from Renogy that we have, um, I added an on and off switch just so you could have more control if you didn't want to use it or you wanted to turn the key and listen to the radio, you're able to turn that off so it doesn't draw from the battery. Sunny was uh, insulated with spray foam by a company here in Vermont. Uh, that worked out really well. Some things we want to talk about in the front here are the swivel seat. Uh, we, we installed that and that was a game changer. That really helped out a lot. Just adding more room or you come in, you can sit down and take your shoes off. So really happy we did that. Uh, we also have here the headliner storage. Uh, built it a few inches further out just to get that extra storage. Uh, but you can see it's, it's very deep. You can put a lot of things in there. I uh, have an insulated uh, curtain. Uh, it's something we didn't use that often because we have those van made gear uh, window coverings that work really well and that's what we would use to cover up all the windows at night. 
But if it's super cold and you need a little extra insulation, uh, you just pull this out. You can hook that back up there. And there's magnets all on the side of her just to hook that. And then underneath there's an opening so your Webasto can still blow hot air. Also in the front we have uh, a little broom closet we built into the shower wall. Just felt like it was wasted space again with the metal studs. So inside here, you can see we have uh, a full-size broom. We have our ax, we have our bug zapper. It's just a little extra storage that worked out really well behind here. And also in the front, we have the Webasto. It runs off gas from your gas tank and helped out a lot on those super cold nights. So this is our bathroom. Uh, our bathroom is bigger than most. It's, uh, I think most shower pans that they're built around are 24 by 32 inches. Uh, we had ordered one of those and tried it out and realized it's way too small for me. I'm a bigger guy. Uh, I'm about 6'3", 210 pounds. So what we did was we ordered the 24 by 40 inch pan, which gave us an extra eight inches of space but you know, when you're building a van, eight inches is a lot of space to give up, but I'll show you how we made up for that later. Uh, so we have the Nautilus door, a self-cleaning door. You just open that up and inside we have a nature's head toilet, which does not need to be removed when taking a shower. And that's a brand new toilet. We switched it out. We also have a clothesline, which we weren't sure if we were going to use a lot, but it ended up uh, being very useful. A few things about the shower being built. Behind the FRP board, we used a waterproof curdy board, then taped the seams and painted a waterproof membrane over that, making the shower very water resistant. Uh, also, we have a little gap here at the top of the door, just so you can hit the fan, the Max Air fan, and draw out steam if you need to. A couple of unique things about the shower, um, when we built it, I wanted to have access to work on it if we needed to. Luckily, we never had to, but this uh, cork board here, it actually just pulls off and behind here is a hole. And that hole will give you access to the shower mixer. If anything was to go wrong, at least you'll have a point to start at and uh, work on it. We haven't had to use that, it's been great. And also underneath the sink here is a little door that you can open up and fill on the bottom to see if any water would leak. Uh, like I said, we've never had a problem with that, but I just wanted to have the ability to work on things if need be. Up here, we have our cooktop area. Uh, we built this cover for protection. Um, so when you're not using it, you still have the full use of the counter space. Um, we ended up using this kind of for a lot of things uh, as a tray, like if you're in bed or a, a table outside, we'd get our little step stool, put this on top and you got a table but it was made for is to use as a backsplash. So you just grab this hook, lock it in, and you're good to go to cook on this two burner induction stove top. Uh, we did most of our cooking on the road in here, uh, probably 95%. So we knew when we left, we wanted a lot of counter space. So uh, there's plenty of counter space here to work with while you're cooking. And also on the other side, we have more, more area to prep. Okay, let me take you through our drawer space. Um, and honestly, I was a little bit concerned with storage. I was really worried that we weren't going to have enough space for everything we wanted to bring. But honestly, it, it was ample storage. Um, so I'll start over here with our electronics drawer. Padded out with felt. Um, and we have some regular plugs and USB plugs back there if you want to charge a laptop or anything else while you're driving. And down below here is our largest drawers that was measured out for all of our kitchen equipment. Plenty of pots and pans, Instapot, uh, Vitamix, toaster. Um, it all fit fine. In the middle here we have a couple of drawers, two drawers for each of us for our clothes. Over here um, we have this top skinny drawer here that was used for, for cutlery. And then the rest of our, you know, kitchen equipment, uh, plates and bowls were in the drawers b beneath. Um, over here, this drawer underneath the step we used for office supplies, paperwork and whatnot. And then underneath that is our safe. You just pop out this panel and it's right there. 
and it was just nice to have that to prevent any smash and grabs it would just slow people down and then over here this ended up being my favorite little cubby this space under the fridge um it's dark and cool and it was just nice ample space where we we ended up putting all of our supplements here's our kitchen sink area when we built this we knew we wanted a big sink we knew we'd have a lot of dishes to do so i believe this one is 15 and a half by 19 inches uh, it fit all our pots and pans and our pans had the handles that removed so it, it worked out well um, underneath we have a three-stage uh, water filtration system and that works uh, through the cold water. So if you want drinking water, you just hit the cold water, you hit the water pump, and you got filtered water to drink. Uh, we have the exterior counter space, you know, to prep with. <clears throat> Underneath, there's plenty of storage space for cleaning stuff, extra bathroom stuff, and we have our little trash can that we used, and a fire extinguisher. And here we have the uh, isotherm I believe it's the Cruise 80. Uh, it's three uh, cubic feet. Worked out really well. We have uh, we could probably get five to six days worth of food uh, when we went out camping, and uh, we were pretty happy with that. So here's our upper cabinets. Uh, there's two on each side. Um, these are actually handles we made, just black walnut to kind of go with the countertops. And when you open them, the, you know they're on hydraulics, so they stay open. Uh, actually the back panel can come off if you ever needed to get to any wiring, uh, hopefully not. Um, and when I built her, I did run a couple extra 12 gauge wire across the top from side to side. Just if you wanted to add anything, it's a, uh, it's a little easier. It's, it's, it'd be really hard to run the wire through. Um, and you have the little guardrail here. So when you open it and you're leaning, nothing will fall out. And when we would stop, we would just leave everything like this. And then when you go to drive, you just kind of lock it in and you're good to go. Uh, this cabinet is kind of our little control center. It has the Victron multi-control, which uh, enables you to turn on your inverter. So you just flip the switch and the inverter is on. So now you can use the regular outlets. We also have the uh, battery monitor under here. And then we have the water gauge, just to read out like the old gas gauge, empty or full, how much water you have. And these are our Max Air fans. We just kind of keep them in here out of the way. And when we built her, we wanted to kind of hide all the components just so it felt more like an apartment rather than an RV. So we put everything away in there. On the walls here, we built these little kind of cubby holes, like kind of a last minute addition, but they worked out really well for storing things. And then we have here, we have the Webasto heater. You know, you have your outlet and you have your lights for the back there, but uh, we wanted the Webasto control right here for at night when we're laying in bed. If it gets cold, we have it set for a 30 minute timer. You just hit it, it comes on for 30 minutes, warms up the van and you're good to go. So on this side, we have uh, two upper cabinets, same as the other side. Uh, we have our little built-in. This was our kind of like our little spice rack, which helped out a lot. And then we have our gang switch. This is a uh, USB outlets. You can plug a couple phones in. Uh, we have our 12 volt kind of cigarette lighter adapter. And then these controls, this is the LED uh, lights for the floor in the kitchen. These are the LED lights for kind of in the back and for the bedroom. So at night we would use these. It's just a softer light. Uh, this is your gray tank. If you flip this, you'll dump your gray tank underneath. And I, we have a 15 gallon uh, gray tank underneath at the sink and the shower feed into. And then this is your water pump. Whenever you want to use water, you turn that on and you're good to go. We have another uh, outlet and then this is the switch for the water heater. So when you turn this on, the water heater starts to go and uh, you'll have hot water in a few minutes. Okay, let me give you the quick specs on our cushions here. Um, so we went with Sombrella fabric, which is really great quality. Uh, fade resistant, spill resistant, easy to clean up. Uh, we went with some soft piping that doesn't have the stiff tubing inside so that when it was in bed mode, it wasn't annoying digging into our back or skin or anything. Um, also, uh, we had a local upholsterer make these for us and he went with some superior foam, which is typically used in RVs and boats for sleeping. So it was great. We, we slept really well um, 
and had no complaints there. Um, and here's our tabletop that Everett made. It's all black walnut and we have it on our Lagoon swivel. So you can turn it any which way and it's pretty versatile. We love it. So in the back here, I just want to show you a few things. Um, our night lights, which actually turned out to be really great uh, for reading, but also they have a USB and we actually used uh, those at night to charge our phones more than not. Um, and underneath the table here, we have another outlet to plug in your computer while you work and a couple of USBs. And back here in the U, we have our laundry. So we have the bottom lined with cedar. And this is also where we house our wee boots. What you do is you grab the antenna and we just feed it through the handle hole. Close that. You can pull it out. Put this back in and then you just put it on the table while you work and it'll help get you a better uh, cell phone signal. So I just want to show you our side window here real quick. It's the CR Lawrence. Um, we almost didn't install it and we're super glad that we did. It was perfect for ventilation right near our heads while we were sleeping. And uh, up front is also a CR Lawrence in the, uh, the sliding door. So I just want to talk about lighting for a second. Uh, it was really important us, for us to have an uh, option, so everything is on dimmers. Uh, when you step in, you have two dimmers right here. Uh, one is for the upper ceiling, one is for the under cabinet lighting, and uh, the shower, the bathroom actually has a dimmable light. And we have LED strips on the floor and LED strips on the, the ceiling back there. So at nighttime, it's a softer light. And then we have these dimmable lights which control the back part of the also we have two max air fans these are great uh you, they can pull in air push out air and you can use them when it's raining uh, we have two of them some people think you only need one our experience is we love having both of them uh, when we were on the beach camping or in the desert camping if the wind picks up uh, the sand will blow through the side windows a lot and it'll just cover inside the van so we would close those and just have one pulling air out and one pushing air in and circulate the air like that. So now we're gonna show you the electronics. Uh, this is kind of where we put everything. Uh, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, like I said, it's only a five foot bench, but the way we organized it, it's very uh, laid out very well and you can tell where everything goes. Um, we have four 100 amp hour lithium Battleborn batteries. Uh, we have, you know, our Renogy DC to DC battery charger. So when you're driving, the alternator will charge the batteries at 20 amps. Uh, we have our Rover 40 amp charge controller from Renogy for the solar panels. And then, you know, of course we have our Victron 3000 watt inverter. Uh, we have our Victron uh, Lynx distributor. It's kind of like a glorified bus bar. So everything runs through that. We have a on and off switch in case you need to shut the whole power down. And then in here, we kind of organize everything. So we have all our fuses and all our breakers put in here. And then on top, just the way I did it was Velcro these little uh, plastic things. So I have my fuses and other kind of electronic stuff always here and ready to work. Um, Underneath the Victron is a cutout with a screen underneath it so the air from the garage can come in and cool the inverter and then in the back there's a hole that it kind of spits the hot air out and then it'll just transfer up to the top. So it's, it's well ventilated, it's clean because it's closed, there's no like open wires like in the garage or anything. Uh, so we really like how it came out and we haven't had any problems, it worked really well. So this is the uh, plumbing side of the van, but first I want to show you the storage. Uh, this is where we kept all our bedding. We had two comforters, two pillows, a bed extension, another cushion. Everything went in here. And this is uh, kind of a big extra storage space. We had, you know, backpack stuff we didn't have to get to a lot, but uh, easy enough just to pull the cushion off and get in here. Um, if you need to like check out the plumbing, you just have to lift these bottoms up and take those out. Just want to walk you through our plumbing system. Uh, we have a 30 gallon freshwater tank. Uh, that water is fed into the, the water pump, which then goes to the accumulator, which just kind of levels out the water pressure so it doesn't pulsate when you're using it. And then we have a 
2.5 gallon Bosch hot water heater. If you want hot water, it goes through that. Um, everything here is uh, PEX piping with shark bite fittings. Um, we have a couple of uh, on and offs for emergency. If you need to shut the water, it won't go towards the shower or um, the sink. So we're just okay. gonna show you how uh, we put the bed together. Um, afterwards, I'll show you, I have a bed extension. That's how we were able to make up the eight inches for the shower is that it comes out to about here. Like I said, I'm six foot three and I totally fit on it. So we put the bed extension, we have another cushion we lay over the top and then we're good to go. So I just want to explain the bed extension. We were building the van, we, you know, we wanted the extended shower, we wanted the long countertop, so we had to figure a way how to extend the bed over the counters. So we came up with this. This is a cushion that we keep in with the other bedding. It's Velcroed down to this extra piece. So you just pop it off like that. It's trifold. that gets stored away. And this is our bed extension. Um, it just kind of like loops around the end of the counter. It's all got felt to protect the counter from getting scratches. You just kind of drop it in here and you have another 15, 16 inches of bedding. Typically it took us less than five minutes to make the bed and we liked having this conversion compared to a permanent bed. During the day we had an office, dining room, and lounge area, and at night it converted completely into a bedroom, which made us feel like we had two very different living spaces depending on day or night, which was helpful in such a small space. So that's the tour. If you're interested in buying Sunny, there'll be a link in the description below with all the details. Also, we're starting a van building business. The first one will be based off the layout of Sunny, so if you're interested in a brand new van conversion, please reach out. And if you're curious about our travels from the last 13 months, you can check out at Van Life with Sunny on Instagram. And if you have any questions, comment below. Later.